Hey guys, Peg Warmer here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at G.I. Joe Classified Series Destro. Destro is number three in the series, even though he's actually the fourth figure in the line. As I've mentioned before, this numbering doesn't really matter. I'm going to be taking a look at Destro and his accessories, and we'll take a quick peek at the running change variant and compare him to other six inch figures. This is our first look at a Cobra box, as Destro is our first Cobra figure in the line. The Cobra background is red and white, as opposed to the Joe's blue and white background, and has the Cobra logo in the center, which you can see behind Destro there. The front edges of the box are just like the front of a Joe box. There's unique artwork on the front that then continues around to the side of the box. And we have the usual artwork on the back of the box, and down at the bottom here and on the bottom of the box, we have our usual Happy Fun Ball warnings. Do not anger Happy Fun Ball. The top of the box gives us another difference uh, from the regular Joes because it's got, it fades from red to blue and has the Cobra logo and the Joes just have the star. Finally, we come to the file card and our last difference from the Joe box. The file card background is red and yellow, again, with the Cobra logo at the top. According to Hasbro, these icons represent the following in this order. Role, what the character does. Gear, what the character uses. Skill, what the character is good at. Mastery, what the character is best at. Destro's card has the following. Mechanical engineering, designs, builds, and maintains complex machinery. Light weapons, uses small handheld weapons. Black market deals, negotiates illegal deals for goods or services. Weapons development tests and manufactures weapons. Destro's file name is James McCullen the 24th. His birthplace is Calendar, Scotland, and his height is listed as 6 feet 3 inches or 1.91 meters. According to his bio on the official GI Joe site, a brilliant businessman, weapons developer, CEO, and engineer, Destro strictly adheres to a quiet personal code that places war, profit, and the success of his own family above all other things. He excels at brokering deals, clandestine negotiations, and double-cross missions. The refined and highly advanced weaponry produced by his company, MARS Industries, continues to reshape modern warfare. It doesn't say it in the bio, but MARS stands for Military Armament Research Syndicate, which, I gotta say, if you're trying to have a legitimate business front for your world domination organization, maybe don't have syndicate in the name. I realize the word itself doesn't specifically mean like an evil cabal or anything, but I still feel like the word has a sinister connotation. But that's just my two cents and what do I know? Uh, before I go too much further, I want to take a quick look at the first run circle head variant of Destro, which I have right here. Oh, or I could just throw it on the ground. Either way, I guess. All right. Now, uh, I originally placed my order for Destro with Amazon near the end of March 2020, and this is the version that I was shipped when he finally got delivered near the end of July 2020. I haven't been able to find out too much about this variant, but most of the sources seem to say that the circle detail on his head was part of the first run and was subsequently removed from the mold and is not found on later runs or on Profit Director Destro. Here is the regular version. You can see there on his on his dome, just nothing there. This is the original version that I got. Zoom in here. There, that circle. There, perfect. So pretty noticeable. There's that big old circle. So no circle, but that box in the back is still there. There you go. I mean, not that not that huge of a difference. I, personally, if I had to pick one, uh, I would go with the regular version here without the circle because he's the one that's going to be easier to find and the circle head variant, you know, isn't going to be. Uh, since I already had him and I want to keep two of every figure, uh, one to open and one to keep mint in box, I ordered another Destro, which is the regular variant here. Um, like with the Snake Eyes Deluxe, I'll be leaving the circle head variant, which is our friend here, I'll be leaving him in the box and just using the normal version here for photography and posing. So we'll just pretend I didn't just do this. All right, and that's a good look at the, uh, the Cobra logo background there. Let's take a look at these accessories. 
Destro's first accessory is his briefcase, which is fantastic. And it's a great reference to his original 1983 B1 toy. It's black and it has the molded in Cobra logo. Kind of hard to tell, but you can see that that's indented. That's actually molded. The handles and clasps are a grayish silver, which is a nice detail. And then inside the briefcase, there are 10 stacks of cash on one side. And on the other side is a computer. Um, I think the attention to the detail on the computer is excellent. A typical keyboard has 14 keys across the top two rows, 13 keys across the third row, 12 keys across the fourth row, and eight keys across the fifth row. Destro's briefcase computer has the same layout and shape of the keys. It's, it's crazy, it's a very, very close match. Uh, the tab key is smaller than the caps lock key, the caps lock key is smaller than the left shift key, the key beneath the left shift key is the same size as the tab key. Uh, it's really nice to see this level of detail. Uh, with each of the keys being raised up, and even a pointing stick, sort of a trackpad here at the bottom, there's also a raised and molded Cobra logo there, painted red. And lastly, probably my favorite part, the screen. The screen is this excellent glittery blue, and if you use your imagination, it could be a fuzzy TV screen or a video call about to end or start, like it's crackling to life. Um, but when I see it, the first thing that comes to my mind is an IBM iSeries session, but that's most likely a me problem. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you know what the iSeries is, or as my dad still calls it, the AS400. Uh, I'd be interested to know who out there even knows what this is besides me, my dad, and a handful of other AS400 programmers that managed to survive the KT extinction event and are still left roaming the earth. Next up is Destro's sidearm. It instantly calls to mind all the time I spent in college playing GoldenEye. Slappers only, no odd job. Again, most likely based on a Nerf gun. I'm trying to do my research and figure out which ones are which, but to me, it looks sort of like a combination or a reimagining of a barricade RV-10 and a Strife, at least to me. But as is often the case, I'm probably wrong. His last accessory is a blaster. It's a little big for a pistol and a little small for a rifle, but it has a scope. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be, besides a nod to the original 1983 V1 Destro, as it looks very similar to the weapon he came with. Uh, just scaled up and refreshed a little. Let's take a closer look at Destro. We'll start with this beautiful chrome dome. The molding and paint on this is excellent. The emotion on the face comes across clearly. The eyes are painted black with blue irises and black pupils. <laughs> it is an awesome look. I mean, that's just, you really have to get up close to see it, but when you do, oh. I love all the other details like the, uh, just kind of the furrowed brow and the, the, the wrinkles on the face. I mean, the ears are sculpted in nice. The chrome goes down to the neck where the lower joint is located. And it's a really nice touch that shows the attention to detail that this line has. So you can see, and I'll get into this in the articulation, but you can see that, there we go. There's this line here and it's painted flesh colored and then into the silver. The collar on his jumpsuit? Uh, onesie? Uh, I don't know, I'll just go with outfit, I guess. The collar looks great. And it really reminds me of the Sunbow cartoon version. It never occurred to me until looking at this version of him that the collar is supposed to look like the hood of a cobra. Not the good kind with a 427 under it, the bad kind that kills people. Although a 427 cubic inch engine in a roadster that weighs 2,300 pounds and has the bare minimum of 1960s safety technology isn't exactly safe for people either. Uh, he's also sporting some bling in the way of a gold chain with what I assume to be a large ruby on the end of it. Uh, I measured it out just to try and get an idea. And the length of the stone is an eighth of an inch and the width is 1 16th of an inch, which converts to roughly 1.5 inches long and 0.75 inches wide. Uh, I did a little digging and it looks like that would come out to roughly 250 plus carats of ruby hanging around his neck. It's not enough that he's got a head covered in gorgeous chrome and has this self-confidence to openly engage in reptile cosplay while at the same time wielding that same self-confidence to wear a low-cut V-neck, showing that he never misses chest day. He has to wear this thing too? Surely Hasbro has reached the limit of the decadence Destro is capable of, right? Toasty. His outfit is black and gray with silver highlights throughout to break up the solid black. He's sporting a techie looking belt and I love that the wrist rockets and holster are straight up throwbacks to his 1983 V1 figure. However, since the rockets and the holster are just straight red with no shading or other colors. They do look very toyish. 
and thereby detract from some of the realism on this tiny plastic man with a chrome face that somehow moves like a normal skin covered face. Y you know, realism. Moving on to articulation, his head is on a ball joint with another ball joint on the neck. He can look up a little bit, but it gets hindered by his, by his collar there. He can look down and with, again, just a, a little bit, but with that neck, with that extra bend in the neck. <laughs> and it could, and now I did just take this guy out, so it could, oh, there we go. I said to force him a bit. Yeah, they, looks down well. I like that. He's got butterfly joints in the shoulders, and they go back pretty well. But forward, not as much as they go back, but you know, still decent. His arms rotate 360 degrees, no problem. However, his arms don't quite hang at his sides naturally. They're kind of pushed out because of the, the shoulder joints. So you can't really get them. Like, that's as neutral as he gets. For a character like this, that doesn't really bother me, as he seems to be someone who would always be in some kind of dynamic pose. Um, his shoulder articulation is a bit limited by these shoulder pads, but they still go up a good bit. Yeah, look at that. That's not bad at all. He has a bicep swivel and double-jointed elbows that go well past 90 degrees. His wrist, both of his wrist hinges are up and down which is great. Like the other figures in the line so far, both of his legs drop down and can go all the way out, forward and back, so he can do the splits, and so they can go all the way to the sides. He's got a, uh, a double-jointed knee, thigh swivel. Now, he does still have the thigh swivel here, but because of the way the holster is connected to the belt, I mean, it's not really going to matter because nobody turns their leg like that. Just be aware that it is something that could become an issue later, but he's got a thigh swivel and a boot swivel, which I love the way they're doing this, that they integrate the boot swivel into the top of the boot and below the pants line, so it just, it looks natural. He's got feet that hinge up and down and a rocker for side to side. So here we have Destro, along with Snake Eyes, Roadblock, and my custom Quick Kick. Here he is with Greedo, Kylo Ren, Darth Vader, and Captain Phasma. I think he and Captain Phasma have a have a similar sense of style. Here we have Destro with Magneto, Thanos, Doctor Doom, and Ultron. Here he is on Squirrel Girl's scooter. Plenty of room for his briefcase there. Fits pretty well. Here he is in Professor X's hover chair. Fits pretty darn well. I could definitely see him tooling around in this thing. Here he is on an Imperial speeder bike. And again, looks like a good fit. Scales really nice. Could easily see that being a, an advanced, you know, futuristic vehicle that Cobra uses. Seems like it might be a no-go for Luke's speeder. He fits in okay, but I think when you look at it head on, he just seems a bit too big. This doesn't seem to be the right scale. Let's see if we try him in the, uh, the passenger seat. What that does. Yeah, well, he fits a lot better in the passenger seat. Still seems a bit too big, but. Can kind of fudge it a bit, but I just don't think that scales very well. And lastly, here we have him in a 1 10th scale World War II Jeep. Now this I have found to be, I don't want to say too big, but it is. it seems just about right. Let me try adjusting him a bit and get him to fit a bit better. All right, so I've got him in this Jeep again, and I think I got him a bit, a bit more in focus this time. There. So again, scale-wise, it's one-tenth scale, which I know for motorcycles is usually the right scale. Uh, for radio control vehicles, uh, I seem to have mixed results. It seems like 1 12th scale can work if you're willing to really chop it up, but this is the only 1 10th scale one that I've got. But so far, I like this the best. Again, it seems to be a pretty decent scale. My final thoughts on Destro are that he is another fantastic figure in the G.I. Joe classified line. He has great articulation, comes with nice accessories, and looks awesome. I highly recommend this figure. Before I knew how great this line was going to be, I was already all in because of two figures, 
Snake Eyes Deluxe, and Destro. I pre-ordered Destro the same day I bought Snake Eyes Deluxe because I thought they both looked perfect. Even though there were a few differences here and there, they were both exactly what I saw in my mind when I pictured watching uh, G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, as a kid. Now, part of that could be rose-tinted nostalgia glasses for a show I watched 30-plus years ago, but nevertheless, to me, they are both perfect. If you're going to collect the line, you can't have Cobra without Destro. Somebody needs to come up with good ideas for Cobra Commander to screw up. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. It will really help my channel grow and would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.